Okay, we're going to look at an example here where we're going to find the volume of a region between two different surfaces. So as with double integrals and similarly with triple integrals, you want a picture of the region that you're interested in. All right, so we are interested in the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. So that's pretty straightforward. You should be able to think about when you plug in x equals zero, you get the parabola z equals y squared. When you plug in y equals zero, you get the parabola z equals x squared. When you plug in z equals zero, you get just the origin, but then when z is bigger, you get larger values, you get circles that form the top. So the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared opens up here, vertex at the origin opening up. And then it tells us here that we have a half cone z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. I'm going to do a little separate sketch of that one and then we'll put them all together here so we get uh, our solid region between those two. When I put in x equals zero, I'll get z equals plus or minus y, but then we might also notice that z is only ever positive. So z will just be the positive values for y. So I'll get z equals positive y is this line, and z equals negative y is the line on the other side, but because z is just the positive square root of x squared plus y squared, we'll just have z greater than or equal to zero. When I put in y equals zero, I'll get a similar thing. I'll get z equals plus or minus x, so again lines. And then when z equals zero, I just get the origin, but when z is larger, I get circles up above. So we end up here with a cone opening upward here. The sides form 45 degree angles with the coordinate axes. All right, so when I think about the 3D solid here, I'm gonna need to think about where those surfaces intersect. So I'm going to start actually by just thinking about what's going on in the yz plane. So I've got the side of the cone, that is a line, z equals y, and then in the yz plane on the paraboloid, I have this parabola, z equals y squared. So there is a slice in the yz plane of the region that is bounded by those two curves. If I think about the three-dimensional thing, the cross sections when I go up the z-axis here are all circles. So if I think about the three-dimensional solid, essentially what I end up with is this three-dimensional region where the inside is formed by a cone and then the outsides are formed by a paraboloid. So on the outside it would look like a bowl and on the inside it would have these straight sides that would look like a V, so like a cone on the inside. All right, so I can find this volume using a double integral or a triple integral. I'm going to set this up using a triple integral. So just like we did with double integrals in area, should understand why the volume of that region could be found by just doing the triple integral over the region D of dV, or of 1 dV. So that's really just adding up all those little volume partitions here, so that gives the volume of the region. I'm going to set this up with z on the inner integral. Our region is not x simple or y simple, but it is z simple. When I go through that thing, I'm going to enter through the paraboloid, the bowl shape, and I'll leave through the sides of the cone here. So I'm going to set this up with dz on the inner integral. I'm going to leave my xy unset up for a second here. Um, so I enter at the paraboloid, x squared plus y squared, and I leave at the cone. And I'm going to leave the outer limits of integration unset up for a second. The reason I'm going to do that is if you think about that projection down into the xy plane, you end up with a circle. So the shadow of the whole solid region down into the xy plane, the widest part would be here where those two things intersect. And that's going to be at one, both of the, the line y equals z and the parabola uh, z equals y squared pass through zero, zero, and one, one. So that would be at one. But if you think about the shadow of that region, that's going to be from that widest part. And so that region down in the xy plane is a circle centered at the origin. So I probably am going to want to use polar coordinates for that part of it. When we will learn a little bit more, we'll learn about an extension of polar coordinates to 3D, which is called cylindrical coordinates. And you could set this up in cylindrical coordinates right from the start. 
But the idea here is that you just are going to use z, ordinary z direction, and then when I get to the x and y part, I'm going to end up using polar on that part. Okay, so when I integrate with respect to z, 1 dz, I get z, and then that's going to be evaluated from uh, x squared plus y squared to the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, so I'm going to plug in my limits of integration, my upper limit of integration first, and then my lower limit of integration. I have to be a little bit careful there with my parentheses. All right, and then since our region in the xy plane is just that circle centered at the origin, that should be a clue that you're going to want to use polar coordinates there. Uh, and again, you need to think about how big that circle is. We know that the cone and the paraboloid both uh, intersect when z equals 1, when x and y equals 1. So we've got that circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. So when I convert this to polar coordinates, I'm going to put my theta on the outside. I'll go all the way around that circle, 0 to 2 pi. And my radius, this is my radius, will go from 0 to 1. My function that I'm going to integrate, I'm going to substitute r squared for x squared plus y squared. And then remember when you do polar coordinates that your dA has that extra r in it, r dr d theta. Okay, in order to finish this integration, I'm going to do some simplifying here before I integrate. Uh, the square root of r squared is technically the absolute value of r, not just r, so you need to be a little bit careful about that, but because our r values that we're integrating over are only positive values here, I can neglect the absolute values and I can just write r for that. I do also need to remember that this extra r that I have from the dA is going to have to be distributed through there before I do my integration. So when I do that simplifying, the square root of r squared, I'll be able to just write r, but then that'll be times the other r that I'm going to distribute through, so I'll have r squared and then minus r cubed. Okay, from here the integration is pretty straightforward, so I'll just write that down. All right, so here I've integrated with respect to r. I'm going to plug in my limits of integration, and then I'm going to integrate with respect to theta. Okay, in this case, remember that this triple integral was actually a volume integral, so we should expect that we're going to get a positive answer for this one.